Hello and welcome to Rhino's Orioles Report. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Orioles had a chance for a sweep yesterday against the Tampa Rays. Tampa Bay Rays, whichever one it is. Very confusing because it used to be Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Well, it's no longer that. <sighs> winning most of the game yesterday. Winning most, yeah, winning most of the game yesterday. Bullpen kind of gave it up late. Disappointing. But two out of three games is still a series win. And the Orioles haven't lost a series against an ALEist opponent in a long time. Or long enough time for it to be. You know, the Orioles are one of the best teams. It's not the best team in the AL East. But maybe that's a little bit of an opinion. See, I'm on MassInSports.com. Got some news to get to, I guess. Depending on how you look at it, really. But let's get to the games first. From Camden Yards. Tamp yes, it is Tampa Bay Rays. Not just Tampa Rays. Not Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Tampa Bay Rays. Got it. Tampa Bay Rays 1. Baltimore Orioles 3. Lower scoring game, I think. Some of us were thinking. Like the Orioles. Yeah, they do struggle with the runs at the time at putting up runs at times, but Tampa Bay has kind of fallen off. There were a time when these Tampa Bay Rays were the elite in the AL East as far as pitching goes. <clears throat> Falling off a bit in past years. And they just haven't been able to hit. For the most part anyway. Gunnar Henderson in that normal leadoff spot. One for three. Walked twice. We're making a note of it on the broadcast. That he seems to be throwing his bat in disgust. Every time he gets walked. You not sure how I feel. About that from the leadoff hitter. I think the leadoff hitter would gladly accept walks. Gunnar Henderson has other ideas, I guess. Rutschman, one hit. O'Hearn, no hits. Mountcastle, two hits. Santander, two hits, also scored once. Kalzer hit, scored once, also worked a walk. Mullins, you can see only two at-bats for Mullins. No hit in either of those. Hayes, pinch hitting late. Again, lefty-righty matchup. This time, though, Brandon Hyde was pushing the right buttons. Other times he's done this, hasn't gotten the right buttons to be pushed. This time it worked out. Hayes one hit, an RBI run scored. Arias got a hit. Getting a... See how much playing time Arias gets now. Mateo, two hits, two RBIs. Mountcastle Mateo with doubles. No home runs. Not too surprising from a three-run game. Albert Suarez forced back into the rotation with the, you know, sad news. Did I cover that the last? I don't even remember when they released that information. Man. Yeah. But forced back in there with, you know, all the injuries. Kramer on the I.L. Means on the I.L. Wells still not around either. But Suarez is acquitting himself very well. Five innings pitched. Pitch count got up there. The Rays here have been they were fouling off a ton of pitches. Somewhat odd if it's more... The hitters were getting on the ball or, you know, uh, seeing the ball well out of Suarez's hand. Or maybe Suarez just didn't have enough oomph for that out pitch. Maybe a little bit of both. Gives up four hits, which is really good, actually. Does give up an earned run, but again, only one. Walks two, which you would prefer. He walked none, but walking two and giving up four hits in five innings is... A very nice outing, especially from your, what, fourth or fifth starter? Yeah, we'll take this. Five strikeouts to go along with it. Pretty good. Downside is you had to use a lot of bullpen arms, a little more than you would have liked. 
Perez goes a full inning, no hits, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. Cano only goes two-thirds of an inning, does give up a hit, no runs, thankfully, walks two. Why he had somewhat of a short outing, no strikeouts either. Not great. Coulomb pitches a full inning, so, wow, what are we in now? The started, He starts out the seventh and goes a little bit through the eighth inning for three outs total. No hits, no runs. Does walk a batter, but strikes somebody out, so fine outing there. Jacob Webb finishes off the eighth inning, getting the one out that was needed. No hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Very few pitches for Webb, only five. Kimbrell in for the save, his 13th of the year. Pitches the full ninth inning. No hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Well, when his back isn't hurting him or he's not being overused, he looks fantastic. Hopefully, we can continue to do that. Game two, Saturday's game, also from Camden Yards. Yeah, we're, we're still at Camden Yards. We haven't gone on a road trip in the middle of the series yet. I keep saying that. I said that last video, too. Duh. Tampa Bay Rays, five. Baltimore Orioles, nine. A lot more runs scored in this one. Henderson, one for five. Rutschman, a hit, run scored, and a walk. <clears throat> O'Hearn, a hit and a run scored. Mountcastle, two more hits, four RBIs, three runs scored, also walked once. Really need to get Mountcastle going. Especially now, get him going now. Get him feeling good now because Toronto's up next. You want him feeling good against Toronto so he can kill Toronto again. Santander hitting fifth here. I think if Mountcastle and Ahern can stay good. Santander can bat fifth, which I think is probably a little better for Santander. Hasn't quite gotten going yet. He's hitting fine. He's just not as well as we've seen in past years. So maybe dropping him down in the lineup a little bit will help. Seemed to help a little bit in this game, didn't it? Two hits, an RBI, scored twice, also worked a walk. Kowser, nothing. No hits. Struck out once. Westberg, two hits, two RBIs, two runs scored. Stowers, yay for Stowers getting a start in this game. Hooray. One hit and an RBI. Eh. I mean, what do you expect for the eighth place hitter? But I would have loved it to, you know, to be better, right? I think we all would. Mullins comes in for defensive replacement late in the game. So, Kowser started in center, goes to left. Mullins goes to center and actually doesn't get in a bat. Yeah, that's about the point we're at with Mullins. It's disappointing. Mateo, no hits, but does get an RBI. Fielding cho fielder's choice and all that stuff. So, we'll take the run batted in. Stowers double. Is fourth of the year. So, very limited number of it bats for Stowers, but he's still getting the extra base hits. Maybe he should get some more playing time. Or at least some more at bats, you know? Mountcastle 2, Santander, and Westbrook. Home runs. Yeah, there you go. Get, get prepared for Toronto, Mountcastle. Get prepared for him. They're coming. Or you're going to them. Yeah. Braddish gets the start in this one. Ugh. Not sure what happened here. To a certain extent, I think it's a little bit of last weekend, what was it, Sunday's game. Threw over 100 pitches. Or he threw a lot of pitches. Can't remember if it was quite up to 100, but. It was between 90 and 100 because, I mean, part of it, he, he pitched seven innings, but he didn't give up any hits. So it's like, you want to take him out? No, you don't want to. But at the same time, it can negatively impact you. I mean, look at John Means since his no-hitter against Seattle. What has he really done? 
He's had a few good outings, yeah, but in the past, what, three years? <sighs> Sometimes you got to save these guys from themselves. Thankfully, Jacob Webb to the rescue throws two and a third innings. So he finishes off the third inning and then throws another two innings. Well, that's, that's how you got to get it done sometimes, right? 23 pitches. That's, that's very good. What is he averaging? Seven and a half pitches an inning there? Or no, he had two and two and one there. Ten pitches an inning. Hey, man, now you, that's great. Fantastic. Save the bullpen on this one. Though not enough because we kind of needed a, an arm or two more for Sunday's game. I mean, look at Bradish's line here. I mean, two and two-thirds, seven hits, five runs, three walks, six strikeouts. How are you giving up seven hits and three? You're still striking out six. Ah. Who who did that? Who else did that? Was it like Rodriguez or somebody? Struck out half the outs they got in like three or four innings, but then they gave up a butt ton of runs. So odd. How is your stuff that good that you get that many strikeouts, but you also give up that many runs? Weird. Almost like you're not mixing up your pitches enough or calling the right pitches. It's odd. Something yours might have to, you know, figure out and stop doing. Tipping your pitches. Maybe that was another thing. That is something that does happen, and I think don't really think about are you tipping your pitches until it's like too late. There's a possibility. Dylan Tate on in relief of Jacob Webb gives up two hits. Disappointing. But in the full inning pitch, you know, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. I mean, you don't like the two hits, but you didn't give up any runs, so fantastic. CNL you know, Perez pitching the seventh inning here. No hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Thank you. Bullpen was dealing today. Mr. Cano in for the eighth inning. No hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Nice to get back to form, Cano. Aiken gets the ninth inning. Big lead, so no point in wasting Craig Kimbrell here. You know, you don't want to attempt to see if he can pitch back-to-back -back days. I mean, there's no save chance. Though I'm pretty sure he did start warming up just in case because Aiken, as you can see here, did give up a hit in the ninth. He didn't want... You know, runners on and a run in and be like, oh shit, let's get Kimball up now. Being a little more proactive than reactive, I think. So yeah, Aiken does give up the hit, but no runs, no walks, strikes out too. It's great. Keep doing that, Mr. Aiken. Don't give up runs like you did the other, that other time. All right, here's Sunday's game. Disappointing game that it kind of was late Tampa Bay Rays four Baltimore Orioles three you can see Rays got their party started in the fifth with one run then one run in the seventh and then two runs in the eighth three runs in the last three innings that's not like the Oriole bullpen it's really not I mean they'll do it occasionally but I mean man had this one had this one I think part of it was, while the offense did score, they just couldn't tack on enough. I mean, you see 15 hits here. Only got three runs to show for it. <sighs> Henderson, three hits, an RBI, two runs scored, also walked twice. So not only did he get 15 hits, Henderson walked twice. Why did you not get more than three runs? You don't see that much at all. Rutschman's three hit. Rutschman three hits in an RBI. Mountcastle just one hit. Santander hitting an RBI. Westberg one hit. Hayes two hits. Hayes got the start today. Two hits. And you pinch hit for him late. 
<laughs> it's so weird how Brandon Hyde does that. Oh, man. Hayes, you're kind of like lower on the totem pole, uh, and you're right-handed. So you, we're going to pinch hit a lefty for you. I mean, O'Hearn gets a hit. Which is fine, but I mean, then, you know, of course, this was in the ninth inning, I think, so O'Hearn actually didn't have to play the field. Mullins, this is probably who you should have been pinch hitting for. Um, no hits for Mullins. Maybe this is who you should have saved O'Hearn for. Maybe pinch hit for him a little early. I don't know. Yeah, hindsight again. So no hurt for Mullins. Kowser did pitch hit late again in the ninth inning. So Kowser isn't going for defense, but Kowser didn't get a hit. Mateo does get one hit. You can see only one at bat, and then Arias comes in. Yeah. Uh, Mullins out there on deck. I'm pretty sure it was still lead off an inning. Getting some warm up swings in there, getting his arms loose, you know, to swing the bat and. Mateo is decides to try to duck in there behind Mullins and grab a, I guess a can of pine tar or a stickum spray or something for his bat. And Mullins had no idea and was, it bam, caught him in the back of the head. Was wearing the helmet. But yeah, Mateo removed from the game, did some concussion testing and stuff, and he's going to go on the seven day concussion IL. I guess you can chalk it up to a freak accident, but at the same time, one, Mullins, why are you so close to the dugout? You know, the, I understand it's the on deck circle, but like, why are you so close to one where all the junk is in the pile? Like, why are you so close? Like, push out a little bit, give some people some breathing room when you're swinging a bat around. And two, Mateo. Why are you so close to a man that's swinging a bat around? It's not a freak accident. That's kind of not thinking clearly enough. Honestly, I mean, it's a stupid mistake is what it is. I mean, it sucks that you may have gotten a concussion out of it, but you have to be more careful with yourself. You have to. It's dangerous out there. Rias does come into, ends up having to pinch hit for Mateo. Goes into play third base, and then Westberg goes from third to second. Oh, Rias, one hit and two tries. Hmm. McCann got a hit, also scored a run. How about that? Hayes a double, Henderson a home run, the only extra base hits. Runners left in scoring position. This is, I mean, this is huge right here. Two for Mullins. Two for Mountcastle. Hayes had one. Rutschman had one. That's why you don't score much runs. Many runs. Team runner in scoring position. Three for eight. That's not great at all. Left on base. 13. Wow. Henderson did steal a base. So hooray for that. Up to eight steals now. Okay. I think what's very disappointing is the performance by Cole Irvin. And it's just what he's been doing. What he's had to put up with from this organization for the past two years. In a rotation. Oh, you're not good enough. Go to the bullpen. Ah, we have pitchers now. Get back in there, Irvin. He did it to him last year and they're doing it to him again this year. And he's... You know, he's coming through for him. Six and a third innings pitched. Yeah, he does give up the eight hits. But again, today it was the day of getting a bunch of hits. But for one reason or another, not being able to push him across the plate. So eight hits, but only gives up two runs. He also walked a batter. So nine base runners and he only allowed two to score. Only one strikeout. I know Irvin's not much of a strikeout, dude, but only one. Here's where things kind of go to shit. Kind of you've been using a lot of arms out there. Because, I mean, you take a look here. Who is this? Perez, Cano, Webb. Couldn't use them Sunday because there will be three days straight. Right? So, 
you only had with those three guys down and you see Tate and Aiken, I mean Tate and Coulomb in here, who do you got left? Well, Kimbrell obviously, but you really only want to use him in a save situation. And then you got maybe you could get an inning or two out of Aiken, probably. But with the Thiago Vieira having a terrible performance, Brandon Hyde did not want to use him. Because he just didn't look that good. He was hoping, I guess, hoping you get Viagra either, either in a blowout situation. You know, either you're down by a bunch or, you know, you're up by a bunch. Did not happen well. But actually, Tate gets out of the seventh inning here. Irvin pulled after getting one out in the seventh inning. Tate was able to get out of the seventh inning. Now, in my mind, well, since Coulomb's available and... Kimbrell's available. Kulam in the eighth. Kimbrell in the ninth. But that would be perfect hindsight. Brandon Hyde here making the decisions. Not perfect hindsight. But you, you certainly understand why. You, in your mind, with the, you know, you had how many guys that had already pitched two straight days and you didn't have them for, you know, Sunday, this day, and they, you don't have another day off for what? Eight more games or something? Trying to push it, trying to push Tate a little bit, trying to get as much length as you can get out of him. Well, you pushed him too much because he came out for the eighth inning and yeah. Gives up four hits, two runs, no walks, thankfully. Four hits and two runs was enough. Does strike out a batter in the one and one third inning pitched. So Aiken, I mean not Aiken, Coulomb finishes off the eighth inning, thankfully. And then pitches the full ninth inning just to give the Orioles a chance to come back in the ninth. One hit, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. Would have been nice to see that line in the eighth inning. But again, hindsight versus hindsight. I, I just throw it to Satan Tom. It's like, I would do that. Do that. If you have to make a move after the game because you need a fresh arm or you need fresh arms from Toronto, do that. I mean, it's like you were scared of Viagra, so, like, why is he even on the team still? Well, he's not now. Spoiler alert. So why was he even on the team for this game? Hmm? Hmm. Okay. So maybe a little bit of Mike Elias, too. But, I mean, use the guys. Coulomb should have been out there in the eighth, and then Kimbrough should have been out there in the ninth. I don't know why. Why you thought anything else would be better? Tate just isn't because of the injury last year. I I can't say that Tate is experienced enough to be able to handle the eighth inning with only a one run lead. Two or three runs, maybe, not with a one run lead. Sorry, I got to go to cool on there. But that's, you know, that's coming from me. Seeing how things played out, obviously. Though at the same time, I was thinking that in the moment. Like, where's where's Coulomb? He didn't pitch yesterday. Throw him in there. Kimball didn't pitch yesterday, so throw him in the ninth. So there you go. Well... Let's get to some articles. This article written by Rock Kubatko. This article came out earlier today and then was also updated because Rock was speculating, you know, official moves had not come out on, you know, what Jorge Mateo's status was. And knowing the bullpen was somewhat taxed in the series, knowing that they were going to need some kind of help. Well, Mateo transferred or placed placed on the seven day injury list it is a special injury list for concussion protocol. 
or whatever I actually, however actually you want to term, term that it is kind of touchy. Is, there, is it an injury? Is it a concussion? Is it, is it something else? It's actually kind of hard to understand. I've had it explained to me a few times and it's like, uh, yeah, I think I kind of understand that. However, seven day concussion list. So hopefully, fingers crossed that it's not worse for Mateo. He did have his helmet on though. That doesn't necessarily help that much. It really doesn't. Cause you know, it's your brain inside your skull. There's no, there's no real support there for that. And Vespi also, Nick Vespi joining the club up there in Toronto. Mr. Uh, Vierga. Vierra? Yeah, Vi Vierra. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Designated for assignment. Wow, didn't even pitch this whole series. Because <laughs> obviously you needed pitching help yesterday, Sunday. Why didn't you do what? Why didn't you do it then? You just throw a game away. <sighs> smooth, smooth, x lax Jesus. And this article written by Rockabaco a few days ago. I can't remember when it became official. It was somewhere between the end of the what series was that end of the series between the Red Sox and then the start of the series between the Tampa Bay Rays John Means and Tyler Wells done for the year they will have surgery on their arms now it is kind of unclear what type of surgery since they both have had Tommy John surgery most likely when the surgeons get in there to start the surgery is really when they would be able to term determine whether it's just some kind of cleanup or retweaking of some sort, or do they need to have full fledged Tommy John surgery again? But means and wells done for this year and most likely the first for the first month or two of next year. Very disappointing. Well, we need Albert Suarez and Cole Irvin to stick around a little bit longer. And hopefully, Dean Kramer can get his tricep right soon. Look at the schedule here. Tough? Oh, wow, we don't even have that because two four-game series coming up. One with Toronto Monday through Thursday, and then the weird four-game schedule that starts on a Friday and ends on a Monday. We'll wrap around to the new week. Very tough stretch, and especially for it being on the road. Monday, that's today, at the Toronto Blue Jays, 7.07 scheduled time. Tuesday, also scheduled for 7.07. Wednesday is also scheduled for 7.07. Thursday's game scheduled for 1.07. I guess an extra two minutes because of the national anthems. You got to do Canada and the United States instead of, you know, just doing the United States. I assume that's why it's 07 and not 05. That, that's probably a guess, but it's probably a really good educated guess. So that is going to do it for this edition of Rhino's Orioles Report. Stay tuned for, yeah, Friday. And I will do the next episode of Rhino's Orioles Report. And I'll talk about this series, these four-game series between the Toronto Blue Jays. So please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I am the Angry Rhino, and this is Birdland.